E oh god, you see that? <laughs> None anyone else would just edit that out and start again, but I genuinely don't care. E <laughs> that's what we're gonna start with. E these are getting hard. Are they not? This wasn't fun. Did anyone see my Fight Club Pro review on Friday night? I would have with Bobby at daft o'clock in the morning. I watch a lot of live wrestling. I go to a lot of wrestling shows. I've been to five shows this year already. Um yeah, I go to good wrestling and then I have to sit back and watch Raw on a Tuesday because I refuse to watch it on a Monday night live because of all the adverts. And you know it's bad when you watch it on a Tuesday and it's still just as much of a chore when there's no adverts in it. Anyway, let's go on with this one. Hello, Mark. Everyone. Hello, uh, hello Mark. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this. These are my Raw thoughts. Once again, the uh, go-home show for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, which, of course, is this Sunday. So we start off with Paul Heyman in the ring. And basically, he says that he's going to uh, he's going to hand his resignation and he's going to leave the WWE. This will be the last time you see him because all this bad juju is going down uh, with, with, uh, with Brock Lesnar. He doesn't want it to affect Paul Heyman. And, yeah, this is a good little segment. I enjoyed this one. Paul, uh, sorry, Paul Heyman looked good. Doing this as he always does. Punk comes out and says, you know, I'm not going to let you do this. The people need you. And, uh, yeah, they basically, they end up embracing. And, you know, they're a team and all that. And Heyman was great here, but it didn't go anywhere. I don't know why they did this one. And then Mark Henry squashed the great Cali in less than two minutes. And Mark Henry is one of those people. I was talking to, talking to a lot of wrestling fans on Friday night. And all of them were like, God, Mark Henry's awesome. And he was like, a year ago, you wouldn't have said that. Or two years ago, you wouldn't have said that. Mark Henry was just some guy. I, I, I really have got to put this out. I think I said this last week to the championship. When Mark Henry finally won the championship, it sort of it established him as a main eventer. And people look at him in a different way. So he battered uh, Great Cali here, hit him with the World's Strongest Slam in about a minute and a half, and then hit the uh, World's Strongest Slam on Hornswoggle as well, which it, it was just one of those, because I can. This is what I do! So I think, all good. In the back, Jericho says he deserves to be in the Elimination Chamber on Sunday. Now, Henry had just returned, and this was his first match by reducing, but he's already in the Chamber. Booker says that Jericho has got to beat someone who's already in the Chamber to get in the Chamber. So tonight, he's got a face-off against Daniel Bryan. If he wins, he's in the Chamber. So, you know, that's backwards logic. Some people didn't just wander into it. Some people have to beat people. So, um, yeah, just Jericho then defeated Daniel Bryan in a really good match, actually. I really enjoyed this one. The crowd were emotionally invested in this one. They were loud. And the match was back and forth. It went, what, about no, almost 11 minutes, I'd say. It was over 10 minutes for certain. So, I was expecting a screw finish. I don't know about you guys. After list last week with the with the stuff with Kane, fully expecting that. And it wasn't. Code breaker, clean as whistle, Jericho's in the Elimination Chamber. Happy days. And I've got to say, I think from this point on, the rest of the show is crap. Literally, there was that segment at the start that was, while well, it was good, it didn't go anywhere. And I don't have a clue what they're going to, what the plans are with it. And then this match. Um, so, right, let's, I've just gone far too far down. So it's John Cena, Sheamus and Ryback then defeated 3MB in a, a nothing match. Uh, the highlight of which was the fact that they all hit their finishers at exactly the same time. whoop de doo We got a recap of Friday of Del Rio pouring paint onto the big slow and taking his wheels off his bus. Which, according to the announcers, is hilarious. Isn't. Um, if, it was, if, if the world title wasn't on the line, maybe. But pouring paint on someone, that's just childish. Isn't it? Come on. Um... Basically, then it'll be, be up Tatsu and Alex Riley. I think it was in the back because I don't recognise either of them. Um, then comes the ring. Matt Stryker to be interviewed by Matt Stryker. Matt Stryker gets two words out before getting punched in the face. Show seeds for a bit and then leaves. Doesn't say anything, which is lovely. M makes me want to order the pay per view just that little bit more. I'm sure you feel exactly the same. So then Jack Swagger defeated Zack Ryder in, a nothing, no in another nothing match. He won with Ankle Lock and then gets to the mic and introduces Zeb Coulter. Who the fuck is Zeb Coulter? Looks like Dutch man tells me. If it is, let me know in the comments. Lawler says he knew him back in the day. So everyone, and, and in the back, um, Teddy Long says, I knew this guy back in the day. And we're all sat there going, who the fuck are you? Who are you? Like I say, it looks like Dutch man tells, but at the same time doesn't. So let me know. Um, this is the problem though with not reading other people's results or trying to stay off Twitter or Facebook when when you're watching the show because of course I yeah I'm sure I'm sure you're screaming at me right now it's fucking Dutch Mantel Mark it just is at this moment in time that I'm recording it at five past four on Tuesday afternoon not a clue so um, yeah um, he got a promo about Vietnam and about immigrants and he's a pro patriot I think it is 
This won't work in the WWE. This is just a fact. Um, oh, man. In the back, Swagger gets put in the Elimination Chamber because of this result. You're like, really? Oh, God. And then Ziggler says that he wants in the Elimination Chamber, so Booker puts him against Kane, which is nice. There's no logic on this show whatsoever, is there? You know, some people can just be put in the Elimination Chamber. Some people have to earn it. That doesn't make any sense. Um, Cody Rhodes defeating The Miz via disqualification. So, <laughs> Cody Rhodes, who did nothing at all in the match. Antonio Cesaro's added in commentary. Um, and he interfered in the match that caused a disqualification, which you were like, meh. But then he uh, hit the big swing on Miz four times into the barricade. That was funny. I don't like Miz as a babe face whatsoever. To see Miz getting owned by someone that I like by Cesaro is good. End of. It's that simple. Uh, ten, oh, God damn. Right, this is just squash match after squash match, isn't it? Ten Sion Bros. Clay then defeated Primo and Epico in one minute. And, I mean, Jesus Christ, do you reckon last time last year when Tensai was signing that contract, he was like, yep, in a year's time I'm going to be the hip-hop hippo again, because that's what he did. He started dancing afterwards. And you're like, oh, God. Oh, God. Please, no. And then, one of the things that I just do not understand, the Funkettes, yeah, they beat up Rosa Mendes for reasons I can't fathom, which is lovely. The Shield come out, they cut a promo where they say, essentially, because the condensed version is that they're not afraid of anyone. They call out John Cena and all that. Nothing happens until the lights go out, and when they come back on, Cena and Ryback and Sheamus are in the ring, beating on the Shield. Yay! Doesn't do anything making me want to buy the pay for you at all. It's prong wins and boring. And then we keep going with these shit matches as Alberto Derail defeated uh, Damian Sandow in yet another nothing match, just over a minute. Armbar getting the win. Pointless. Waste of Sandow. WWE, get some fucking jobbers in, please. Excuse me. In the back, Bo Dallas beats up Wade Barrett and. Um, they are, oh, I should have said this earlier, I even say it on my notes. Fandango, does anyone, anyone care about Fandango? Because I'll tell you something, folks, I don't. Who the fuck is, let me guess, this is a guy who dances. So I've got to either cheer him because he dances, or boo him because he dances. And, oh, I don't know, I've got that one bro, fucking bro with Clay. Wade Barrett then defeated Kofi Kingston, showing no effects of the beatdown that Bo Darius has given him. In a match that went longer than one minute, this one went three. The highlight of this one for me was when he went for the, what's he called, the bull hammer? I always seem to forget that name. Went for the bull hammer, missed. So he um, he wrapped Kofi up in the apron and hit him with the elbow then. That was quite a nice little touch, I like that one. But yeah, the highlight, yeah, that's the highlight. And the match was last, was crap, other than the match lasted three minutes. And then Kane defeated Dolph Ziggler to advance into the Elimination Chamber in a, a meh match. I mean, it was better than most of the matches we've had tonight. In fact, I'd say, other than Daniel Bryan versus Chris Jericho match, I'd say this was better than all the matches we've had tonight. But it still didn't, I think by this point in the show, I'd just given up. I'd just like, please make this end. Please, please, please. At the end of the day, remember what I say, I seem to say this every week, since we get an interview in the main event these days, this was our main event, and it just didn't feel like a main event much at all. It didn't feel like there was very much chemistry between these two guys. It just felt flat, and it was a meh. And of course, in, the, in my opinion, the wrong person won. So, you know, and in our main event slots, huh, The Rock comes out, you know, the champion who wasn't on the show at all last week. Rock comes out, talks about Nashville, talks about buying a car from a crackhead, doesn't go anywhere at all until Punk comes out. They brawl, uh, spine buster for Punk, Heyman interferes, go to sleep, Punk leaves with the championship belt. That's your show. Do you give a fuck about Elimination Chamber? Not in the slightest. Does it feel like WWE give a fuck about Elimination Chamber? Not in the slightest. This Raw was completely and utterly avoidable, and they best improve soon, because already I'm starting to flag on these, because it's just like, I just don't give a shit. I just don't care. They were so good in January, leading up to the Royal Rumble, and now it's just... Ugh. Oh, yay. Like I say, try being me, yeah? I went to Fight Club Pro on Friday night. It was incredible. From top to bottom, the card was fantastic. I saw great wrestling action that I actually emotionally invested in. This, I don't care about at all. I'm doing these for you. <laughs> it's that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, I was going to do my No Way Out 2004 the re review uh, this week, but then I remember that it's Elimination Chamber, so I'll do some Elimination Chamber predictions on Thursday. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Mark P. Hit that subscribe button. What do you think of Raw? I, can't, I, mean, I can't be the only one who felt like this. If you thought that Raw was fucking awesome this week, will you do me a favour and let me know 
why and if it was Dutch Montel let me know there as well even though this is the ivory thing right I've got my computer here I could quite easily just right now go is it Dutch Montel but I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll let you have the satisfaction was it Dutch Montel let me know hit that like leave me a comment I've been Mark P and I'll see you all very soon oh before I go I'm, I've got I'm, I'm on 898 subscribers so seriously if you're watching this and haven't hit that subscribe button hit it it's for the greater good I'll see you all soon take it easy